Greetings, Mathophiles. Welcome to a video in which we explore issues having to do with changes in the price level, i.e. inflation. As I record this video in September of 2022, inflation is much in the news. Uh, for a number of years, it had run in the United States at around 2%. And then from 2020 to 2021, it has run about 5.3%. And from 2021 to 2022, it's up to about 8.3%. Um, and there are a number of ideas about uh, how this has come to pass. Certainly, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has disrupted world food and energy markets. Um, there's been a lot of stimulus from the U.S. federal government in response to uh, the COVID crisis. And so uh, it's, it's quite a mix, and it's tough to disentangle. And we're not going to look so much at causes we're going to look at ways and means of measuring and of comparing prices over time. Price levels typically are measured by means of some uh, scale called an index. And the way it works is you choose some base year or base interval to be represented by some number like 100. And then you sort of work off of that. So if prices have gone up on average 2% in the next year after your base year, and then you take the 100, you multiply it by 1.02, and your index now has a value of 102. If inflation is 2% the next year, then you take that 102, you multiply it by 1.02, and you get about 104.04. .04. And so this index essentially is a just a proportional scale that measures the price level. In the United States, it's calculated by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and they look at, believe it or not, 8,018 different items that they believe that an urban consumer in the United States would need to buy in order to run their lives or want to buy in order to run their lives. And they get average prices for these items periodically, and they, um, they weight them according to some set of weights that they have devised to that represents how much people spend in various categories. And then they use that as the basis for calculating uh, the price level, the consumer price index, as it's called, uh, from one interval to another. In this video, we're going to be looking at the US uh, average for urban consumers uh, value of the consumer price index, which has a base period from 1982 to 1984. If you take a look at uh, the values in that interval, 82 to 84, if you were to average those three up, you would get 100. So they didn't exactly choose a single base year. They chose a base interval. Let's make a few simple calculations. We're going to start by giving you an opportunity to calculate what the rate of inflation has been from August of 2021 to August of 2022, uh, which is the most recent monthly value that uh, I have available as I make this recording. So I will tell you that in August of 2022, the value of the consumer price index is 296.171. And in August of the previous year, it was 273.567. And I'm going to pause the video and give you an opportunity to use those two numbers to try to calculate the rate of inflation uh, over that 12 month period. All right, well, back and you'll see on the screen uh, the calculation that I made. It's simply the ratio of the two indexes. You want to know what the old index had to have been multiplied by in order to get to the new index value. So you just divide them and you find that that quotient is about 1.0827. So the rate of inflation for that interval was about 8.3%. Let's take a look now at a comparison between uh, prices then and prices now for a given item. And what I'm going to use is the cost of a first class postage stamp, one ounce worth of first class postage. In 1975, at the start of the year, postage was 10 cents. And actually later that year, it was raised to 13, but let's use the 10 cent value. So postage is 10 cents in 1985 what would be the equivalent now? And so to make that calculation, you're going to need to know the values of the consumer price index currently and back then. And so we're going to use for the current price level, uh, the first half 2022 value, which is 
and we're going to look back at the 1975 value, which is 53.8. And I'm going to again pause the video and give you an opportunity to try to figure out on your own what the equivalent of 10 cents in 1975 would be in 2022 using the values I've just given. So the calculation that one makes, you can see a little formula there on the screen. The calculation one makes is just to equate the ratio of the prices to the ratio of the consumer price index values. So P2 over P1 equals CPI2 over CPI1. And if you plug in the relevant values for our little question and solve that uh, simple little proportion, you get that the equivalent of 10 cents back then is about 54 cents now, which is not insanely different from the current price of a first class postage stamp, which is 60 cents as I make this recording. Now let's take a look at an entire time series of price values for a first class postage stamp. And so I have the prices going back to 1917. Uh, before 1917, uh, it gets a little weird because of uh, you know, the issues involved in setting up a, a postal system and so on. But from 1917 on, they seem to be reasonably comparable. So I'm going to select these values and I am going to insert a chart. This is from the insert menu. And I'm going to choose, I think, not a line graph. I'm going to choose a scatter plot line graphs. All right, for this. But there we go. And as you can see, we have an impression of quite a dramatic increase. Not surprising, since we go from uh, three cents back in the day up to sixty cents these days. And so, you, if you were to look at this graph, you would say, "Wow, that you know, that's really been quite an increase. What's going on here?" Well, let's see what happens if we look at real prices, as they're called, prices that are adjusted for inflation. So you'll see a little formula that um, has to do with equating prices then with prices now. And I'm going to employ that formula in making a column of uh, real prices, as they're called, in terms of 2022 dollars. So I'm going to say that uh, the real price is equal to the price then times the current CPI value, which I'll scroll down and take a look at, 288.3, divided by the value for that year. And so it looks as though three cents in 1917, 105 years ago, is equivalent to about 68 cents now. So I'll copy that formula and fill it down uh, through all of our values. As you take a look at these prices, you see that they tend to be in the 50 something to maybe up towards 70 cent range. If we graph those, let's see what happens. So I'll grab the years and then I'll just hit command and grab these real prices, 2022 dollar prices. I will insert a chart. I will, I don't know why it makes these default choices that it makes. And we'll go to a scatter plot. And as you can see, it's a very, very different impression. The impression one gets here is of variability around a fairly stable value in the upper 50s of cents. I think you see more variability in the past because a one cent price increase which is sort of the minimum price increase that you can, you can really imagine, is going to be proportionally a much bigger deal when you've got a five cent stamp than when you've got a 55 cent stamp. Let's take a look now at another time series. And these are prices per gallon of gas um, for years from 1949 to the present. And in the case of the present, uh, what I have used is just the most recent pump price I saw, which is about $3.80. Um, 
prices did spike earlier this year, uh, late spring into the summer. And so uh, at some point later on, if you have access to this uh, database, you can uh, imagine plugging in uh, $5 or 480 or whatever the highest price was that you saw uh, earlier in 2022. But up through 2021, these are sort of official uh, U.S. Energy uh, Information Administration numbers, and then the the 380 for 2022. That's that's just me looking at uh, what I see as I drive past gas stations. So let's do the same thing that we uh, did with postage stamps. Let's take a look at the appearance we get when we graph the price against the year in nominal terms without any kind of inflation adjustment. Then we'll adjust for inflation, and then we'll see what uh, how that changes our view of what's going on. So I'm going to pause the video and give you a chance to make a scatter plot of the price per gallon against the year, just as we did in the case of the postage stamp. All right, let me uh, go ahead and do that as well. So I will make a chart, oops, and I forgot to highlight my data. So I will select my values. Now I will insert chart and it'll give me a line chart, which is not a bad choice, but I, I kind of like scatter plots for this purpose. So there we go. And as you can see, it seems to be rather flat uh, up through the 60s into the 70s. And then it kind of takes a, a bit of an uptick. And then uh, towards the late 70s, you get a noticeable increase. And if you know a little history, you know that this was at a time when uh, OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, was beginning to really exert its muscle uh, around uh, prices and uh, production. And anyway, you can see it, then it's sort of plateaus for uh, quite a while. And then it takes off and gets uh, pretty volatile looking after about the year 2000. I'm going to pause again and give you an opportunity to make a column of real prices, inflation adjusted prices. And then we'll proceed to look at uh, the appearance that that graph gets. All right, you may remember that the play was to take the nominal price, multiply it by the current year consumer price index, which again is 288.3, and then divide by price index for the year in question. So uh, 27 cents roughly in 1949, is equivalent to about uh, 325 today. I'll copy this and I'll pull it down. We could, if we wanted, format this column uh, so that we weren't getting these ridiculous tiny fractions of cents. Uh, I'll just leave them as they are because our main interest is in what the graph looks like. But if you wanted to, you could go to the, the format menu and you could set these to just display to the cents. I'll pause again and give you an opportunity to make a graph of these real prices against the year. All right, we're back. I will highlight my years and then I will highlight the prices in 2022 dollars and we will insert a chart and there is a scatter chart. And as you can see, it's a, it's a somewhat different impression. Um, that fairly constant looking set of prices up through the early 70s actually represented a real decrease uh, because it was against um, a slight decline in the value of the dollars that were being used to buy the gas. And then you have that big spike in the neighborhood of 1980 and then a drop 
and then another spike in the early 2000s. And probably since about 2000, 2005, it just gives the appearance of a lot of variability. Uh, but notice that, you know, if we look back here, for example, in uh, looks like the early teens, we were up above 450, kind of within a shouting distance of $5 a gallon. Um, and so the, the uproar in 2022 about uh, prices approaching $5 a gallon, you know, that's, that's definitely not without meaning. That's, a, that's an imposition on people who, uh, you know, maybe have somewhat limited incomes and need to do a lot of driving. But in fact, it's, it wasn't historically unprecedented. Uh, it wasn't as though it was insanely different than uh, anything that had ever been experienced before. You know, in the neighborhood of 1980 and again in, in the neighborhood of about 2010, uh, in real terms, we were in that ballpark uh, nationally. Here is yet another time series, and it's a rather interesting one. This is the federal minimum wage from 1967 on. And as you can see, it was back in the late 60s, a dollar an hour. And it grew pretty much annually uh, for quite a while. And then every so often in the 90s and then much less frequently thereafter. It was actually last changed in 2009. And the reason I inserted these uh, values for the last few years is just so that we can, uh, as we observe this time series continuing into the present, we have an opportunity to, to see the effect of inflation on that constant 725. And so you'll see on your screen a set of tasks that uh, you might wish to perform if you are viewing this as part of the Mustang block. Uh, which is a thing at the school where I teach, then this is an assignment. If you're simply viewing this out of interest, uh, you found it on my channel, then it's a thing you might uh, choose to try to do. And that is to go through and uh, graph the nominal uh, minimum wage against the year, make an inflation adjustment uh, to $2022, and then graph the real uh, change in the federal minimum wage over time, and then uh, formulate for yourself a bit of a description about uh, what the effect is of adjusting for inflation, uh, as opposed to not adjusting for inflation, and your view of uh, what this time series means. I hope this quick little introduction into how inflation is measured and how to calculate around it and adjust for it has been uh, of interest and of use. Happy mathing.